Hello, Sergei. I hope you don't mind my informal mode of address or the fact that I felt the time had come to go right to the top on what I regard to be a very serious matter. As U.S. President Harry Truman was fond of saying, the buck stops here, and had a sign on his desk to confirm it. This meant that the top guy was the one who was ultimately responsible for getting things sorted out. Well, a lot of bucks have certainly stopped in your vicinity, Sergei, but there comes a time when leadership, rather than just making money, must be the name of the game. And I hope you'll exercise that leadership and stop your YouTube team from harassing me. Of course, I realize that I am just a tiny grain of sand to the gigantic edifice of the Google YouTube empire, but I'm sure you realize that without all those grains of sand, there wouldn't be a beach. Now, my charge of harassment may seem rather extreme, but it is the only word I can find that seems to fit the situation. I will try to make my explanations as brief as possible, but there is a need to cover some old ground because the YouTube team doesn't seem to understand the seriousness of what they keep insisting I must do to resolve a problem that is not of my own making. On March 29, 2011, I received a notice from the YouTube team. We have disabled the following material as a result of a third-party notification from James Allen Kahn claiming that this material is infringing. Holocaust, hate speech, and were the Germans so stupid? But the notification did not include any details of the claim being made against me, just the bare notice and a rather intimidating paragraph which begins, Please note. Repeated incidents of copyright infringement will result in the deletion of your account and all videos uploaded to that account. Which, considering I had not yet been found guilty, was rather poorly worded, wouldn't you say? Far better to tell me exactly what I was accused of doing. My response was that I was almost certain I had not infringed any copyright material because what I had used would fall under the protection of fair use in the copyright law. On April 2nd, I requested full details of the claim, which I received on April 5th, one week after my video had been taken down, and I immediately discovered the following. James Allen Kahn was not known at the London telephone number he had given to YouTube. It is a charitable organization, and there is no person of that name in their database. The video he claimed that I had infringed, Germany, the Nazis, and the Holocaust, could not be found on the Internet, and he had only written this on the claim form. My video, not from YouTube. He gave no URL, no video hosting site, no date uploaded, no nothing. Apart from the false telephone number issue, the fact that I could not possibly have infringed the copyright on a video that was nowhere to be found didn't seem to occur to the YouTube team, so they jumped straight to DEFCON 1 and shot my video down. I have given the details of this obviously fraudulent claim to the YouTube team in several emails, but they insist that I must supply them with a formal counter-notification. Their most recent rather exasperated email, written as though they were addressing a child, is dated April 12th, as follows. Once more, when we're notified that a particular video uploaded to our site infringes another's copyright, we remove the material as the law requires. If you feel a content owner has misidentified your content as infringing, you may file a counter-notification. But the phrase, we remove the material as the law requires, is not quite the whole story, implying as it does that a shoot-first, ask-questions-later course of action is required by law. This is not the case, as we shall see, and the absurdity of such an inference is easily exposed if one considers the following scenario. A team is employed by an organization such as the ADL to have some YouTube videos it doesn't like taken down, either forever or for as long as possible. Members of the team open YouTube accounts at Internet cafes and immediately submit copyright infringement claims, giving the same kind of false information that James Allen Kahn gave about my video. Then, the alleged infringing videos are immediately removed before any of the YouTube team lifts a finger to see if there might be a scam going on. Instant censorship with no strings attached. But I would like to point out that in August 2008, U.S. District Judge Jeremy Fogel of San Jose, California, 
ruled that copyright holders cannot order a deletion of an online file without determining whether that posting reflected fair use of the copyrighted material. So in my case, YouTube has clearly not acted in accordance with this ruling, but still insists that I submit a counter notification. As you should know, Sergey, filing a counter notification means that I must supply my telephone number and address. Never mind that I have already pointed out several times that they are asking me to supply personal information to someone that the YouTube team already knows has demonstrated his dishonesty by signing off on a false telephone number and other provably false statements. Clearly, this person has absolutely nothing to lose except a YouTube account. I would therefore suggest that the YouTube team's constant and circular requests for my personal information, otherwise they will not reinstate my video, is not only harassment, it is bordering on reckless endangerment, because they must realize that they would be passing on my personal details to someone who has manifestly supplied YouTube with false information, which in a court of law would amount to perjury. The contested video has been re-uploaded by several other YouTube account holders, one of them adding, As an Israeli Jew who has served over four years in the IDF, I support the open discussion of the Holocaust, and I am opposed to the laws of Germany, France and elsewhere, which make it an offence to question the Holocaust. These re-uploads have gone unchallenged. On the other hand, I've been harassed by other YouTube account holders with graphic descriptions displayed in my comment section of what they allege I do to young children and camels. It is an understatement to say they are not pleasant people. So would you, Sergey, deem it wise to comply with a request to supply your personal information to someone who has already proved himself, or maybe herself, in writing to be a liar? I very much doubt it, because you didn't get where you are by acting stupid. And I don't think you should allow your team to encourage YouTube account holders to act stupid either. In fact, in light of Judge Fogel's ruling, the YouTube team may have acted illegally by immediately enforcing a copyright claim without first obtaining the claimant's assurance that he honestly believed his material would not be covered by fair use. And the fact that the alleged infringed material could not even be located would almost certainly cause any judge to immediately throw out any counterclaim about what is and what is not YouTube's responsibility with regard to the serious matter of determining the difference between a genuine attempt to protect copyrighted material or a blatant attempt at censorship. I hope that you will give this matter your urgent attention. Sincerely, Anthony Lawson